So this is the required practical for photosynthesis. Now, I'm sure you already know the word and formula equation for this vital biological process. And this is, of course, when green plants use carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light energy to produce glucose and oxygen. Now, in this required practical, you need to investigate how various different factors could affect the rate of photosynthesis. And so we're going to look at how we can change light intensity and how that affects the rate in this particular practical. So we're going to use an aquatic plant. This is just common pondweed that you can buy from a pet shop or a garden centre. And We've got this in some water at the moment, just keeping it nice and fresh. So we're going to take a piece about this long and we're going to pop it into a boiling tube. Now, before I do that, I'm going to put some sodium hydrogen carbonate solution in the boiling tube as this will encourage the pond weed to photosynthesize. Now, I've clamped my boiling tube so that you can see inside the tube nice and clearly but in the school lab you may have used a test tube holder to hold your test tube but I've just clamped mine today. So I've got a nice sized piece of pondweed here and I'm going to pop it inside my sodium hydrogen carbonate solution and I'm going to make sure it's right below the level and then just to make it easier for us to see the oxygen as it's being produced we're going to cut while underwater the stem of the pondweed and then as we measure the rate of the photosynthesis we're going to count the number of bubbles of oxygen gas we see leaving that cut stem so i just need to get down here and use my dissecting scissors just to ooh, snip there we go the very end of my pondweed off. I'm just going to push that a little bit lower in my solution. There we go. So now I'm going to be able to count the number of bubbles of oxygen produced in one minute, and that will give us a measure of the rate of photosynthesis. So I've cut my pondweed at an angle across the stem because that's the best way of ensuring you get a nice steady stream of oxygen bubbles coming from it. So the independent variable is going to be our light intensity. And to change that, we're going to change the distance between our pondweed and our light source. Now I'm using quite a powerful light bulb here, but actually it may be better, and you may have done this at school, to use an LED light source. This is because the LED sources don't give off very much heat energy. And of course, because the temperature will also affect the rate of the photosynthesis, we don't want to have two variables changing at once because that would make the test unfair. But this is the one I'm using today. Um, and so this is the one I'm going to investigate. So the end of my ruler, I've moved in so it's directly in line with the bulb inside my lamp. And I've angled my tube with my pondweed in so it's aligned to the 10 centimeter mark on the ruler. So now there's a 10 centimeter distance between the light source and the pondweed. I can now turn on my light. Now I'd want to turn the overhead lights off at this point as well so the only source of light on my pondweed is coming from my lamp directly. I'm not going to take my measurement straight away because the pondweed needs a little bit of time to adjust to the brightness of the light and start the photosynthesis at the correct rate. So I'm going to leave it just a few minutes and then I'm going to take my measurements. So I've waited a few minutes now and the pondweed has adjusted to the level of light that it's getting from the light bulb. And so now using my timer, I am going to time for one minute and count the number of bubbles. And that's just the number of bubbles coming from the hot surface. There may be other bubbles coming from the leaves around it, but just to keep it a fair test, I'm going to count the ones from the end of the stem. So moving down to eye level so I get a really good clear view, off I go. So with the pondweed, this distance from the light, we've got 23 bubbles in our first minute. So now I'm ready to change the value for our independent variable. So I'm going to move my pondweed away from my light so that it is now 20 centimetres 
from the light source. And again, as I did before, I'm going to leave it for a few minutes so it can adjust to the new level of light, and then I will count the bubbles again. Now I need to do five values for my independent variable, so I'll repeat the experiment with the pond wheat at 30, then 40, and finally 50 centimetres away from the light source. And so your results will look a little bit like this. And as you can see, as the distance between the light source and the pond weed got greater, the number of bubbles produced in a minute decreased. There is another way that you may have seen this experiment being done. And this is where we actually collect the gas because, of course, one of the errors that we may have introduced in the first method is that we've assumed that every bubble of oxygen produced is exactly the same volume. So you may see it where we collect the volume of oxygen so we can measure it more accurately, or you may just collect the oxygen to prove that it is oxygen gas that the pondweed is producing. So this method, I've got a large beaker full of water. I'm going to take some of my pondweed and I'm going to trap it under a glass funnel and place that in the bottom of the beaker. Now obviously again with the light source close by the pondweed will start to photosynthesize but to collect the oxygen I need to take a boiling tube full of water turn it upside down and place that over the top of my funnel and now as the bubbles of oxygen are produced, rather than just disappearing into the air, they will pass into the boiling tube, displace the water, and then after a few hours, you should have collected enough oxygen that you can either measure its volume or you can test with a glowing splint, which should relight to prove that it's oxygen.